the moment before conception, coming into conception. Yes, ideally it would be, well, in tantric terms they would call it the bardo, in between, in between dying and rebirthing again, there's a period where the consciousness basically shrinks down to origins, we'll call it that way. And that's clean. And then when it comes into the womb, when you incarnate, when you're starting to wrap in flesh, that experience, the consciousness is clean. And what you would experience is a rainbow body. It's just flowing rainbows. There's no form. But you will feel the, uh, the egg uh, split and two cells form. And you will go through the process of the body being built over the central canal. The central canal and the being, the energy canal, or the core of the being, uh, is that actual splitting, what happens when that cell splits. So all the cells are splitting around this energy polarity in the being. As, as you progress in the development of the consciousness reforming again and incarnating, then the previous, uh, uh, I call it, experience of girdles is formed around that uh, uh, energy field reforming the previous karmic kind of balances, if you call it conditioning. And of course, then there's the parental conditioning on top of that, too, the environmental conditioning, but it's primarily what's brought forward from the previous, previous you know, kind of life, lifetime. So it's really important in the, uh, for, for clearing to experience clearness, clearing the clear state of the being pure state of a being, and then watch the conditioning being formed over that pure state energy. Like it, the experience is the energies are being girdled or crimped. So do you access that experience of that memory or that process through a specific exercise? Yeah, there are exercises, but I, it, there, yes, there, uh, there are a number of different avenues in, into that. Um, when I had that experience, I was doing a practice called... Um, 16 Buddha body practice, which is done in the death center, and it's a way of uh, creating a, a mirror, a sphere, in a specific location in the body, and then looking into that, and you start to get images will come out, and you put them in sets of four, and it will start to tell a story, and then it will begin to unfold more and more and more rapidly, and you will start to go through rings of light and you will pop back into a previous life or a, a previous experience. In my case, I popped back into the uh, Dharmata, the transcendent experience that happens when you, after you die. So would that be a, a, a kind of exercise you would give a student at a certain stage? The, that, those all those exercises are extremely powerful, and there are some very strict parameters. D doesn't isn't at a particularly at a at a, a stage, but there are restrictions for doing that. You'd never practice that from those exercises, that particular practice, for more than three hours a day, and never in the city. It should be in a, in a country environment, good food, clean body, and not more than three hours a day. So. It, you know, it's a powerful exercise that way. The, there are other ways of, of doing it, but they all kind of work around with uh, willing yourself into the past, uh, but not in a mystical sense, like in actual fact, going from today and then remembering what you did in the morning and then what you did yesterday and try and string it back farther and farther and farther like that until you can connect up all the pieces in this life and then work your way back into the into the womb. Now, I find that would be very difficult, but it is all of the exercises are all part of what would you would do if you were interested in that area. You approach it from many different practices and angles as you possibly can and see what works. What works for one person may not work for another person. For me, although I was doing the exercises for 16 Buddha body, it was very powerful experiences. I started making the quite, uh, connections and images, but what really took over is that from all the exercises I was doing, a question formed in my mind, and it said, what form does consciousness take when there's no body? 
what's left over when, when you take away the body? And that question, so first I could say, I only describe it as a burning question, mm -hmm. that it took over and, and solidified and became tactile and stayed fixed. It was absolutely 100% fixed for about 30 hours. And then I had that popping back into the uh, bardo, and then going through the bardo, and then being attracted to the womb, seeing the womb, entering the womb, and then going through the experience of the cells splitting and the whole body growing, uh, and then through into the life and reliving the entire life, seeing license plates and cracks in sidewalks, uh, any direction you wanted to focus in, you could move into with ease. And this then, whole life, that yeah, your current anything. life. Yeah, and then the thing was is that the conditioning that, that is in, usually invisible to us became visible, and it was like a, uh, like a line out on a lake that was under the water that had a whole bunch of things attached to it that you would just pull up one line and it would of conditioning and it would take you right back to the womb. Mm -hmm. And pull up another one. So it was like not all at once, it was in different pieces. But when I first saw the womb conditioning and the light conditioning, when I first saw it, it's hard to explain, but it's like a fishbowl. You saw everything at once. Mm. And then it broke into into individual pieces that you could see each one how they were how they were conditioned on, where they came from what they did to the energy field, and what circumstances in life made them real, more real, made them more solid in your being, and what circumstances in your life kind of lessened them or dissolved them. Very powerful experiences, those. So mystical, mystical experiences. How long was that series of study for you over, like, was it a course of a few days or weeks or uh, one it's, When you finish this work, it's hard to tell. I mean, I'd done, you know, at that point, many, many, many years of, of intensive meditation. The actual experience itself, the absorption where I lost time, was about 14 days. So wow. the unfolding was about 14 days. I did eat, but I was never lost the visionary, never lost the experience. I didn't sleep very, very little. Uh, when I would rest, it was just in the heart, and it was just this wonderful, radiant experience. Very uh, feeling of total uh, fulfillment in that. But what it does to change you is it changed the whole outer world. My whole world's circumstances changed. Uh, well. Everything became really easy, hmm. so everything changed, and so there's, there's a, a long period of uh, integration after those experiences to uh, allow old formations to die away. They don't want to stick, it's too painful after those experiences, and that's when they, the wounds experiences are for clearing, mm -hmm. and that the clearing is, is that you have to really do have to experience a clear pure being, your clear, pure base kind of bolonga chitta, base consciousness, and understand that how we perceive the world, and our special reactions, our, our views are largely a delusion. Uh, I don't think you can break it through psychology or anything, you really do have to do that birthing, birthing experience. So it goes in stages. I've been working on it, say, my first intensive I did in this area, where I started working on it, would have been in 1971. And then I had this experience in 1986. So I'd done a series of, like, the breathing exercises, working with all different, the postures, you go through the, the postures that they use to help get into the postures that you would take in the room, all those types of exercises, I had little glimmers and little, you know, seeds were being planted. The question was there. I did a, a, a major amount of work in recall of this life, systematically uh, working with uh, situations in life that are very predominant to see where conditioning was. For example, like 
try and remember all the places that you had meals and the way the table was set and what the, what, what the circumstances were around food. That's one. Another one is toilets and mm -hmm. showers especially when you're in foreign countries or visiting people. I think a lot of times you'll never remember high impact things, just shut it out. So those are very important areas to try and get back into again. Once you get into that area, you can kind of branch out and get into a certain certain memory thing. You have to really you have to work on it. It's not it's fun work to do. And then you can start splitting splitting out. And then coupled with that, a lot of work with dream, dream recall, and a lot of people do analysis of dreams. I will only work with the feelings in the dreams. And that's very, very close to, the, to your womb experiences. Your dream feelings are a condensed emotional state. That's a one-tone state in the dream. So when I wake up, I would try and get that tone. And then you start to see that that tone that you had in a dream was similar to a, a well, you didn't know about the womb yet, but similar to flickers of emotions you would have through the day. So that was another part of that work of the putting the putting the puzzle together. And of course, you can't do any of it unless you have a question. Mm -hmm. Really, the question is the driving thing. Mm -hmm. And you do everything you can, everything you hear about, you try it. Yeah. Could I ask a, a yeah. question? Are all of those memories recoverable? Like you talked about meals and places yeah. you've been, yeah. and in theory they say there's the cost of record or something record like that. But in in reality, it has to do with how how here here and now you are in the present. If you're involved in a fantasy when you're when you're in an environment, then you're not going to be aware of the environment as much as if you were there present without all that clutter that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So you obviously can't be aware of what's happening behind you. I mean, how is it that you recall things? It's, it, that, and that's another important part of the study and the exercises you do. You have to kind of examine memory. It's really, it's a recognizing of what's happened in the past. There are special abilities that happen when you're in these altered states that you can remember, but still, when you're doing womb experience of it, yeah, you do hear sound, you are in the womb, you're there and you're here at the same time. And so it brings up a lot of questions about how accurate these experiences are. Mm -hmm. But it, when it makes transformations in you, you know that there's, it's been real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't recall everything as far as I can tell. Although when you're in the altered state, you can remember things that you never, it didn't seem possible, even at the time that you were, that you were registering. Mm -hmm. But it does, a lot of it has to do with how clear you are in the present. Yeah. And the exercises you would do, so one of the exercises you do for memory to test and see how things work, is say you uh, you would take that tripod here, you got a tripod, you put the chair here, you put the top here, and you put the broom here. And you look at that. Okay? Then you shut your eyes. Mm -hmm. Just close them, and you recall that. Mm -hmm. That's memory. Now it's not the same, right? It's not the same as when you're looking at these mm -hmm. objects. It's different. You're not even sure exactly how far this is away. It's like identifying the bird's feathers. Like you consciously, when you're going back and remembering, those are really important exercises. But unconsciously, you do recognize you're taking the photographs yeah. of these. Yeah. But you recognize it changed you. No. Okay. So it, it, it is it is it's questionable the memory like that. So a lot of the mystical experiences that you have in meditations, the symbols are deep psychic symbols that emerge. And say the bardo is like a moving through a uh, you're being pushed when you're in the bardo. You're moving, you're still nothing particularly happening, and then you're moving very fast to a completely different environment as these karmic forces are, mm -hmm. are pushing and resting and pushing and resting, and it's more symbolic. The experiences are not so much this worldly, but deep feelings of, like, say, movement would be like a comet. Mm -hmm. Like you move like a comet. Sparks fly off you when you move fast. 
and you can move huge distances very quickly. <laughs> so you're, it's, it gives you a clue that consciousness is popular, like people talk about incarnation, reincarnation, you know, like you are going to dissolve. I mean, mm -hmm. that's gone. Mm -hmm. Something else is there. If you don't have that subtlety of awareness and understand that language, then you're going to be pushed around blindly. Mm -hmm. If you understand the electromagnetic field and how consciousness shrinks and what form it takes and the symbolic world and how to navigate through there, then you're going to have a much better chance of going consciously through one of those conditions like that. The forces are very strong, mm -hmm. very powerful. And birthing is a very, 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 I think, most powerful tool we have at our modern age of spiritual new tools to open up to clear a being so that they can get on the it's you're not going to be totally cleared by doing it but you're going to be able to start to explore without so many handicaps mm -hmm. memory is really really a fascinating thing people place so much emphasis on memory and self you know myself you know, some, but it's it's all very very Tenuous, very the memory of the past, you know. Mm -hmm. You get bumped in the head and you don't remember anything, it's gone. Yeah. Chemicals. Well, you know how pieces are in the past. I had a friend visit uh, that I drove up here, uh, the lady that we were doing helping move out of her house, and uh, her daughter came up from, from Carolina. I took him, I took this, her mother and the two children, her two children up here, I drove her up here in 1969 in my car. And she was, the young girl was talking about us camping in Atlanta. I had no memory of it whatsoever that, that I'd been there with them. Mm -hmm. I remembered Atlanta, there, remember all the stuff around him and everything there, but I didn't have those, they were like not in that memory. Mm -hmm. Until she mentioned it and then I slowly started to come back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, slowly started because it wasn't there at all. Totally surprised when she was talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat. Right. So there are, can, we can be assured that there's lots of pieces of this 67 year tape that's been running. Is definitely, a lot of it's not, not accessible anymore. Mm -hmm. Yet there's this vague memory of the past and a vague feeling like we're going to go on forever. Very fascinating stuff. <laughs>